Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Stan Houston. It's my privilege, my pleasure, as a part of What It Takes Radio, the company that's committed to helping you get on the radio and make your mark in the world. We can help you do that. And uh, it is our privilege and our pleasure to work with uh, Jim Hinckley, uh, the gentleman, the storyteller, the uh, little bit philosopher, but certainly the guy who knows almost everything there is to know about classic car history and, of course, that wonderful legend and lore, that lane called Route 66. So you are in tune, in touch, and engaged to this fine program. Now, in my own podcast, I just recently spoke about an interview question that I got many years ago when... uh, Some guy turned to me after looking at my profile and having a bit of a conversation. He simply said, well, Mr. Houston, it seems like you've done a lot of things. Then he paused and said, tell me something I don't know. (laughs) That was quite a question. How would you handle that in an interview? Well, you know what? That's what Jim Hinckley does every week. He tells me something I had no clue about. As you'll discover today, I found out there was a car company in Oklahoma named Geronimo. (laughs) And there are all kinds of other car companies in the world. And so he will delve back into the history that you never knew was there and tell you stories that, just like the one I just mentioned, you'll remember Maybe for a long, long time. So, uh, it's time to go. It's time to uh, get on Route 66 and enjoy the show. Hey, good morning, my friends. Welcome to another edition of Car Talk from the Main Street of America. It's a beautiful 34 degrees this morning here at the studios of Jim Hinckley's America, just within spitting distance of legendary Route 66. Today's program, sponsored in part by the good folks at uh, Tucumcari, New Mexico, uh, visit Tucumcari NM. For the latest things to do and see in Tucumcari. Tucumcari Tonight was once a series of billboards along Route 66, and it's still good today. The stop at the Roadrunner Lodge, you know, you were assured a little bit of time travel. It's a magical place that blurs the line between past and present. But Route 66 is not the only reason to visit wonderful Tucumcari. Take a, like, take a gander. I'd visit two from Cary NM. You know, uh, here at Car Talk from the Main Street of America, we talk about uh, the automobile industry, past, present, and future. And you know, we today in the modern era, we've got uh, technology changing things at a dizzying pace. And I don't know. Sometimes it's hard to grasp that how much the automobile changed the world in the uh, closing years of the 19th century and the beginning years of the 20th century. Just as an example, consider this. Here in the United States, Charles and Frank Duryea demonstrated their first motor wagon on September 21, 1893. In 1895, a second Duryea was driven 54 miles at an average of 7.5 miles per hour and won the first United States automobile race. Commercial production of Duryea commenced with 13 cars sold in 1896. These were the first automobiles to be manufactured and sold in the United States. In 1896, Henry Ford built his first automobile. In 1896, the Barman Bailey Circus included a Duryea motor wagon, and they gave it top billing over the albino, the fat man, and the bearded lady. Olds Motor Vehicle Company, founded by Ransom Eli Olds in 1897. The Winton Bicycle Company, one of the largest manufacturers of bicycles in the world, reorganized as the Winton Motor Carriage Company on March 15, 1897. And in 1898, Henry Ford launched the Detroit Automobile Company. 
It would be his first of three automotive companies and would be his first to fail. And James Ward Packard established the legendary Packard luxury car line in 1899. But here's an interesting tidbit for you. It was electric vehicles that were at the forefront of automotive technology in those years. Tragically, Mr. Bliss, in 1889, Henry Hale Bliss became the first pedestrian in the United States to be killed by an automobile. Driver Arthur Smith's car was an electric, handsome cab. And the electric vehicle company, which operated the taxi that struck and killed Bliss, they operated from 1897 to 1907. In 1897, the first electric taxis began operation in New York City. 28% of the 4,192 cars produced in the United States in 1900 were electric. In 1901, in New York City, 10% of the taxi fleet was electric cars. Oliver P. Fritchell, a chemist and electrical engineer, began building electric vehicles and batteries in 1906. And for urban applications, Fritch guaranteed a 100-mile range per charge. To try to prove his car, in 1908, he drove from Lincoln, Nebraska, to New York City in a two-seat electric Victoria. Interestingly enough, the 1,800-mile trip took him 20 days. He only had one flat tire, didn't have any mechanical problems, but in the rural America, no one had electricity. The first cars designed and produced by Ferdinand Porsche, well, they were electric cars. Heinz, Pierce, and Munchauer, established in Buffalo, New York in 1865, the company was a leading manufacturer of household items, including gilded bird cages. But George Norman Pierce bought out his partners in 1872 changed the name to George N. Pierce Company, and began diversifying manufacturing. In 1890, the company was a leading manufacturer of ice boxes. Then came bicycles and related components. Next followed automobiles. To give you an idea about the uh, power in the American economy, consider this. The auto industry comes of age. Between 1900 and 1930, Jackson, Michigan had 24 automobile manufacturers. Birmingham, Alabama had nine. Louisville, Kentucky had 13 automobile companies. Fargo, North Dakota had two. Oklahoma City had six automobile manufacturers. Even in Enid, Oklahoma had an automobile company. In Los Angeles, California, well, they had 88 automobile companies. And slogans, you know, today we've kind of gotten away from this a little bit, but slogans were a big part of selling early automobiles. Some of them leave us scratching our head today, and others are succinct portraits of, well, what it was like to be an automobilist in the era. No hill too steep, no sand too deep. That was the slogan for the Jackson automobile. No clutch to slip, no gears to strip. The Carter car. Perfectly simple. Simply perfect. That was a tagline for Maxwell. The king of the hill climbers was the Allen. Ford was the universal car. Vaughn was the car made in the Carolinas. The Pope Toledo was the quiet, mile-a-minute car. The Beggs, well, they were made a little better than seems necessary. Odd little advertisement. With Oldsmobile, you had nothing to watch but the road. One of the things I, I greatly enjoy doing here is sharing tidbits from the past. The American auto industry provide a little perspective, but we also like to tr provide a little perspective of the future, and we try to personalize this, if we can, with your stories. Stories such as this one. Some folks that uh, bought themselves a uh, Model A Ford in uh, New Hampshire, and COVID came about. Well, uh, out of work, bored, need something to do. They always wanted to do Route 66. Guess what? They threw everything into a stock 1929 Ford and realized they'd have to camp and cook along the road just as our pioneering forefathers did because during COVID, most restaurants were closed. Well, in three weeks, 21 days, they covered 8,000 miles in a 1929 Ford. Pretty astounding stuff. That's a personal story for you. 
some people I know. Future of the automobile. Well, 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 we are seeing some big changes that are slipping under the radar. Uh, electric vehicles coming all the rage in a lot of countries, and people are realizing that, uh, well, they still have a bit of a shortcoming. But there's great things coming down the pike. For example, take a look at the Plug Share app if you happen to have an electric vehicle or considering an electric vehicle. The Plug Share app is free, and it lists places all over the country for level one, level two charging, anything you need to know to make sure that you make your trip successful in an electric vehicle. Got some changes coming down the pike, speaking of uh, changing times. Uh, hopefully we'll be providing details on that by April 1st. Meanwhile, thanks for tuning in, listening to uh, Car Talk from the Main Street of America. And, uh, well, join us for our Sunday morning travel program, uh, Coffee with Jim. That one is live streamed 7 o'clock Mountain Standard Time on Podbean. And we always have some fun. Last week we talked to Bob Bose Bell, the legendary historian, author, and uh, humorist in general, all around storyteller. My friends, let's see what Stan's up to this morning. Well, Jim, you have my attention fully once again. And uh, I have a big smile on my face because, once again, you tell me stories where I would have never known that. In fact, I oftentimes now come to the conclusion that if you were kind of where I am in what they say, kind of Southland, we would probably call you Jim Boy. <laughs> okay? Yes, sir. And uh, what you have is there are a number of, you know, jingles from Jim Boy. Uh for instance, based on what you did today, you've said, you know what? You can't live a life by looking in the rearview mirror. That makes a very poor planning tool for the That's future. That's right. But you would also then say, a wise man will at least look back and see what happened in the past before he moves yeah. forward. If you don't know where we've been, you don't know what you can't, you can't figure out where you're going. See? Jingles from Jim Boy. <laughs> there we go. Hey, I, I just simply wanted to ask, because this would happen to... You said there was actually a car company, uh, and I thought you mentioned this and got it right, uh, in Enid, Oklahoma, right? Yeah, the Geronimo Motor Company. Geronimo. It was uh, in business from 1917 to 1920. My goodness. Now, see, this is what really struck me about this whole presentation. Uh, and I think this is something that really reflects where you, <laughs> you are helping us see. These were people who were brave and courageous. That only had a three-year run. But somebody, there's a story behind every one of these car companies. There's a story of somebody who took a risk, was courageous. Of course, there were shysters and, you know, <laughs> boondogglers there. But there were also a whole bunch of people who have given for us the legacy of creativity, of courage, and a commitment, and a willingness to fail. But you know what? If the car company only had a 20-year run, it could have been a very, very good contribution to the world. And I think that's where your story led me today. Well, you know, some of these companies like Jackson and the Jackson Automobile Company, Jackson, Michigan, they were in business, uh, oh gosh, like 1903 to 1923. But just like it's, we mirror this today. You look at how Twitter has been bought up by Elon Musk, who's tied into Tesla, and you get this whole uh, tangled network of uh, business enterprises trying to, trying to tie innovation and finding a way to profit from innovation. And the Geronimo was the same way. It gets very complicated, but it, it's a snapshot of what the auto industry was in the years around World War I. The company should have succeeded. Uh, they were capitalized at $500,000. Here's where it gets really confusing. Uh, Robert Clark was the vice president, and to manage the factory, uh, they uh, invited uh, Tom Brewer, he had been running the Jones Motor Company up in Wichita, Kansas, and they were on the verge of bankruptcy, so he was 
eager to move somewhere else. And the, the uh, Geronimo, named, of course, for the famous Indian chief, it was introduced in 1917 and had a Lycoming engine. Well, Lycoming went on and became one of E.L. Cord's famous companies that powered the Duesenbergs, Auburns, and Cords. And Lycoming engines were also used in the Tulsa 4, another car that was built in Oklahoma. They'd went and broke pretty early, and Geronimo had bought up all the engines that they had not been able to use. And then 1918, to cut costs, they started using Rutenberg engines, uh, six cylinders. That's what had been used in the Jones 6 in Wichita, and guess where they bought the engines? They bought the engines from the bankrupt Jones Company up in Wichita. And the company tried to diversify too fast. They, they were just getting off the ground, and they decided to introduce a uh, worm-drive, one-ton truck and a four-wheel drive tractor, all at the same time. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So it gets all complicated, twisted, and, and just just strange, these but, things. But it's very much like what's going on today with tech companies. Right. Courage and creativity and failure and innovation flourishes. Yeah. And uh, the, like I said, you just proved my point. <laughs> exactly. Behind every one of those is a man a woman, a brave person who steps forward and tries to make it happen. So thank you for doing that. See, jingles from Jim Boy. Hey, tell me, where is Jim Boy going to be, and how can we find out more about uh, what is up so we can learn about Route 66 and, of course, uh, the fun of understanding the history and uh, perhaps the lessons from the American automobile. You're on. JimHinkley'sAmerica.com. Sample straight and to the point. You can uh, find out what I'm doing. You can find about 10 years' worth of stories. Uh, you'll find uh, all kinds of event information. You list events for free for people. There's events all along Route 66 throughout the United States. Uh, recommended location, places where we've tested the pills and tasted the enchiladas to save you the trouble. Uh, all kinds of great things there. That's right, and uh, so I would really encourage you to do just that. And uh, have a good week again, you know, drive safely. Uh, you take a lot of risks in life, so uh, yeah, just just be careful, my friend, okay? <laughs> well, just getting out of bed in the morning can take be a risk. You know, That's just right. <laughs> Another jingle from Jim Boy. Hey, <laughs> thank you so much, Jim. We'll see you next week. Take care, and bye for now. Sounds good. Adios. Say hello to a new friend On an old road Take a two-lane trip of memories Into mysteries unknown Come along for the ride Jim Hinckley's America Jim Hinckley's America